Number one asks us to find an equivalent expression to 2i times 5 plus 3i. So we're just going to distribute this 2i into both pieces within the parentheses. So 2i times 5 is 10i. And then 2i times 3i, 2 times 3 is 6. And then i times i is i squared. Then remember that anytime you have an exponent higher than a 1 on i, it will simplify because i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So i squared is equal to the square root of negative 1 squared, which means that the square root and the squared will cancel. So i squared is equal to negative 1. So right here, we actually have um, 10i plus 6 times i squared, which is negative 1. So this is 10i minus 6. So let's look for an equivalent expression here. And you'll notice that all of these are written with the real component first and then the imaginary component second. So if I think about this one, this um, real component is negative 6 and then we have a positive 10i. So that's gonna be equivalent to part A. Number two, Lynn says, when you add or multiply two complex numbers, you will always get an answer that you can write in the form A plus BI. Noah says that he doesn't think that that's true and gave some examples. So first let's check Noah's arithmetic to make sure that he's correct. So here we're just adding two quantities together. So we'll just add the like terms. So 7 plus 3 is 10. So that's good. And then positive 2i plus negative 2i is 0. So we're good there. In the second one, um, we're multiplying two quantities. So we're going to do 2 times 2, which is 4. We're going to do 2 times 2i, which is a plus 4i. 2i times 2, which is a plus 4i again. And then 2i times 2i, which is a 4i squared. And then we remember from number 1 that i squared is just negative 1. So then this is really um, 4 plus 4i and 4i is 8i, and then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and then 4 and negative 4 is 0, so this just equals 8i, which is what Noah has. So he's correct in both cases. Um, so both cases are correct. So can Noah's answers be written in the form A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers? And the answer to that is yes. So remember, this first part is the real part, and then we have the imaginary. So in the case of the 10, we have 10, and then we have plus 0i. So our a is 10, and our b is 0, because we know 0 times anything is 0, so this will simplify down to just that 10. But this is written in the form a plus bi. Then in this second one, we have an imaginary part, but the real part is 0. So now this is 0 plus 8i, so our a is 0 and our b is 8. Number 3, explain to someone who missed class how you would write 3 minus 5i times negative 2 plus 4i in this form. So we're going to have to multiply these. And so I multiplied by distributing on the last screen. Um, I'll put this one in the box. So 3 minus 5i and then negative 2 plus 4i here. So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 2 times negative 5i is positive 10i. 3 times 4i is 12i. And then 4i times negative 5i is negative 20i squared. So let's deal with this i squared first. Remember that i squared is really negative 1. So then this is negative 20 times negative 1, which is just positive 20. 
So this box right here actually simplifies to positive 20. So then we'll take out our term. So we have negative six. Um, oops, sorry. This has a like term now. So these are like terms here. So this negative six and this positive 20 combine to positive 14. And then we have the um, 10i and the 12i as like terms. And those add together to be positive 22i. So then your final answer is 14 plus 22i. Number four, which expression is equal to 729 to the two-thirds power? So remember when we have a fractional exponent, the bottom is the root. So we have the third root of 729 and then to the second power. So I don't see that anywhere, so we must have to simplify further. So the cube root of 729 is 9 because 9 times 9 is 81 and then times nine again, so we're multiplying the nine together three times, is 729. So then cube root of 729 is nine, and then we still have the squared, and I see that one here at part C. Number five, find the solution to each equation or explain why there is no solution. So for this one, um, we would wanna isolate the x squared so we can add two thirds to both sides. And then we'll get two X squared equals, well, five and one third plus two thirds gets us to six. So then we will divide by two and we'll get X squared is equal to um, three. Then you can square root both sides. And remember when you square root both sides, you get a plus and a minus solution. So we get x equals the plus or minus root of three. Part B will square root because this whole thing is squared. So then we can square root to isolate what's inside of those parentheses. So we'll square root both sides. And then remember that we get a plus or minus root of 81 and the square root of 81 is nine. So now you have two equations here. So you have x plus one equals nine and you have x plus one equals negative nine. So solve both of them. So here we'll subtract one and we get x equals eight and we'll subtract one here and we get x equals negative 10. Then part C we will subtract 14 from both sides and we'll get 3x squared equals negative two. Divide by three to both sides and we'll get x squared equals negative two thirds. So then this is gonna have no real solutions because you can't have um, a number squared equal to a negative number. So no real solutions to this one. All right, number six asks us to plot each number in the complex plane. So horizontally is how we'll move for the real number portion, and then we'll move vertically for the imaginary. So for this first one, 5i, that's really just zero plus 5i. So we're going zero in the real direction, and then 5i in the imaginary direction. So there's a. B is going to be two in the real direction and then four in the imaginary direction. C is negative three plus zero I. So we're just going to go negative three in the real direction. D is one in the real and then negative three in the imaginary. E is negative five in the real and then negative two in the imaginary. Number seven, select all expressions that are equivalent to this one. And so you can put this in the box. I'm just gonna do the distributive property here. So I'm just gonna do three X times X, which is three X squared. 
Then I'm going to do 3x times negative 4, which is negative 12x. Then I'm going to distribute the 2 to both pieces. So 2 times x is 2x. And then 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So then if we combine these like terms here, we would get 3x squared, negative 12 and 2x is negative 10x, and then the negative 8. So we'll go ahead and start looking for some equivalent expressions. So a doesn't have an x term, so this one certainly cannot be equivalent. b is equivalent. It's this exact same answer down here. So let's look at c. So if we distributed the 3 in, we'd get the 3x squared, but then we'd get 6x in the middle. So this one is not good. D, let's distribute these in and see if they would match this. So 3 times x squared is 3x squared. Then we have negative 9x. Distribute this negative in, we get negative 1x and negative 8. So we see the 3x squared and the negative 8, and then negative 9 and negative 1 gives us that negative 10. So D is equivalent. Um, e. We'll do this same idea, so distribute in to check. So we get 3x squared, we get negative 9x, then we get negative 10x, which I can just stop because negative 9 and negative 10 is not going to be negative 10. Then the final one, 3x squared minus 12x when we distribute the 3x in, and then plus 2x minus 8, that's this part right here. And if we were to simplify it, it would get to that negative 10. So F is an equivalent expression.